morning prayer for Friday begins on page 413 in your prayer books. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Through Christ, let us offer up a sacrifice of praise to God, the fruit of lips that acknowledge his name. Glory to God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, as in the beginning, so now, and forever. Amen. The opening canticle, a song of God's grace. We have complete freedom to go in the most holy place by means of the death of Jesus. He opened for us a new way, a living way, through the curtain, through his own body. Since we have a great high priest set over the household of God, let us draw near with a sincere heart and a sure faith with hearts that have been made clean from a, a guilty conscience and bodies washed with pure water. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. There are two psalms appointed for today, Psalm 143 and Psalm 146. You'll find Psalm 143, first of all, on page 143 in your prayer books. Hear my prayer, O Lord. In your faithfulness, consider my petition, and in your righteousness, give me answer. Bring not your servant into judgment, for in your sight can no one living be justified. For my enemy has pursued me, they have crushed my life to the ground. They have made me dwell in darkness like those forever dead. Therefore my spirit grows faint, and my heart is appalled within me. I remember the days of old. I think on all that you have done. I consider the works of your hands. I stretch out my hands toward you. My soul yearns for you like a thirsty land. Be swift to hear me, O Lord, for my spirit fails. Hide not your face from me, lest I be like those who go down to the pit. O let me hear of your merciful kindness in the morning for my trust is in you. Show me the way that I should go, for you are my hope. Deliver me from my enemies, O Lord, for I run to you for shelter. Teach me to do your will, for you are my God. Let your kindly spirit lead me in an even path. For your name's sake, O Lord, preserve my life, and for the sake of your righteousness, bring me out of trouble. In your mercy, goodness, slay my enemies and destroy all those that come against me. For truly, I am your servant. Psalm 146, page 377. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, O my soul. While I live, I will praise the Lord. While I have my being, I will sing praises to my God. Put not your trust in princes, nor in flesh and blood which cannot save. For when their breath goes from them, they return again to the earth. And on that day all their thoughts perish. Blessed are those whose help is in God, the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord their God. The God who made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, who keeps faith forever, who deals justice to those that are oppressed. The Lord gives food to the hungry and sets the captives free. The Lord gives sight to the blind. The Lord lifts up those that are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord cares for the stranger in the land. He upholds the widow and the fatherless 
As for the way of the wicked, he turns it upside down. The Lord shall be king forever. Your God, O Zion, shall reign through all generations. Praise the Lord. Holy God, through your beloved Son, you reconcile all things to yourself, making peace by the blood of his cross. Fill us and those for whom we pray with your peace and joy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. first reading today is from the second book of Chronicles, chapter 33, beginning to read at verse 21 and going through to verse 13 of chapter 34. Ammon was 22 years old when he began to reign. He reigned two years in Jerusalem. He did what was evil in the sight of the Lord, as his father Manasseh had done. Ammon sacrificed to all the images that his father Manasseh had made and served them. He did not humble himself before the Lord, as his father Manasseh had humbled himself. But this Ammon incurred more and more guilt. His servants conspired against him and killed him in his house. But the people of the land killed all those who had conspired against King Ammon. And the people of the land made his son Josiah king to succeed him. Josiah was eight years old when he began to reign. He reigned 31 years in Jerusalem. He did what was right in the sight of the Lord. He walked in the ways of his ancestor David. He did not turn aside to the right or to the left. For in the eighth year of his reign, while he was still a boy, he began to seek the God of his ancestor David. And in the twelfth year, he began to purge Judah and Jerusalem of the high places and sacred poles and the carved and cast images. In his presence, they pulled down the altars to the Baals. He demolished the incense altars that stood above them. He broke down the sacred poles and the carved and the cast images. He made dust of them and scattered it over the graves of those who had sacrificed to them. He also burned the bones of the priests on their altars and purged Judah and Jerusalem. In the towns of Manasseh, Ephraim and Simeon, and as far as Naphtali, in their ruins all around, he broke down the altars, beat the sacred poles and the images into powder and demolished all the incense altars throughout all the land of Israel. Then he returned to Jerusalem. The eighteenth year of his reign, when he had purged the land and the house, he sent Saphan, son of Azaliah, Marziah, the governor of the city, and Joah, son of Johaz, the recorder, to repair the house of the Lord his God. They came to the high priest Hilkiah and delivered the money that had been bought into the house of God, which the Levites, the keepers of the threshold, had collected from Manasseh and Ephraim, and from all the remnant of Israel, and from all Judah and Benjamin, and from the inhabitants of Jerusalem. They delivered it to the workers who had the oversight of the house of the Lord. And the workers who were working in the house of the Lord gave it for repairing and restoring the house. They gave it to the carpenters and the builders to buy quarried stone and timber for binders and beams for the buildings that the kings of Judah had let go to ruin people did the work faithfully. Over them were, the appoint, were appointed the Levites, Jahath and Obadiah of the sons of Moriah, along with Zechariah and Meshulam of the sons of the Kohathites to have oversight. Other Levites, all skillful with instruments of music, were over the burden bearers and directed all who did the work of every kind of service. And some of the Levites were scribes and officials and gatekeepers. May the Lord, may your word live in us and bear much fruit to your glory. The second reading is from the book of the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 22, verses 17 through to 30. After I had returned to Jerusalem, and whilst I was praying in the temple, I fell into a trance and saw Jesus 
saying to me, hurry and get out of Jerusalem quickly because they will not accept your testimony about me. And I said, Lord, they themselves know that in every synagogue, synagogue I imprisoned and beat those who believed in you. While the blood of your witness Stephen was shed, I myself was standing by, approving and keeping the coats of those who killed him. Then he said to me, go, go, for I will send you far away to the Gentiles. Up to this point, they listened to him. But then they shouted, away with such a fellow from the earth, for he would not be allowed to live. And while they were shouting, throwing off their cloaks and toss tossing dust in the air, the tribune directed that he was to be brought into the barracks and ordered him to be examined by flogging to find out the reason for this outcry against him. But when they had tied him up with thongs, Paul said to the centurion who was standing by, is it legal for you to flog a Roman citizen who is uncondemned? When the centurion heard that, he went to the tribune and said to him, what are we about to do? This man is a Roman citizen. The tribune came and asked Paul, tell me, are you a Roman citizen? And he said, yes. The tribune answered, it cost me a large sum of money to get my citizenship. Paul said, but I was born a citizen. Immediately, those who were about to examine him drew back from him. The tribune also was afraid, for he realized that Paul was a Roman citizen and that he had bound him. Since he wanted to find out what Paul was being accused of by the Jews, the next day he released him and ordered the chief priests and the entire council to meet. He brought Paul down and had him stand before them. May your word live in us and bear much fruit to your glory. The Canticle, Saviour of the One. Jesus, Saviour of the world, come to us in your mercy. We look to you to save and help us. By your cross and your life laid down, you set your people free. We look to you to save and help us. When they were ready to perish, you saved your disciples. We look to you to come to our help. In the greatness of your mercy, loose us from our chains. Forgive the sins of all your people. Make yourself known as our Saviour and mighty Deliverer. Save and help us that we may praise you. Come now and dwell with us, Lord Christ Jesus. Hear our prayer and be with us always. And when you come in your glory, make us to be one with you and to share the life of your kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. So we pray today for those who are facing persecution because of their witness to the gospel. We pray that they may experience the comforting presence of Christ in the midst of their hardship. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray that unity, peace and harmony may become a reality, especially in those nations currently where people suffer discrimination on account of race, gender, class or religion. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for ourselves that we may treat every person with kindness and with respect. And that we may never forget to show compassion to those who are underprivileged, unwanted and unloved. Lord, in your mercy, 
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In our diocesan cycle of prayer, we've been asked to offer prayers today for the ministry with the Aboriginal people of Australia. Bishop Chris McLeod, the National Aboriginal Bishop, for all Aboriginal clergy and people of this nation. We pray too for the Children's and Families Ministry in this diocese, for Dorothy Hughes, its facilitator. We pray today for St. Luke's Frankston East, for Glenn McRae, Rene Fitzner, and Louisa Fitzner, the clergy team there, and for all the people in that parish. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Pray for our own parish of All Saints with St. Catherine, praying for the entire parish family, especially those who are ill or hold concerns at this time. And today we are particularly mindful and holding our prayers, Jill Fiddler, Dennis Fitzgerald, and Peter and Elaine Flynn. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Eternal God and Father, by whose power we are created, by whose love we are redeemed, Guide and strengthen us by your Spirit, that we may give ourselves to your service. Live this day in love to one another and to you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us praise the Lord. Peace be to us all. Love with faith from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. <laughs> 